Hey, badass business owner, ever wonder where your money is going? Today, I hope to share some insight into where the money is going in your small business. Let me ask you, have you ever had an amazing month of sales, yet by the end of the month, very little of it is left? Where the heck did it go? Well, the first step to resolving this is to understand the flow of money through your business. Now, you're probably wondering why on earth would you watch a video on the flow of money through your business? Because in your mind, you already understand where your money goes. But my question is, do you really? I say this because a lot of times I will sit down with a small business owner who is extremely frustrated that they work so hard and yet they have no money at the end of the month and they don't know what happened. They often have a general idea of what it was spent on, but a lot of times they will miss areas that they're bleeding money because they're not looking for it. We all know that money flows into the business through your sales. We call this income on your profit and loss statement. For most of you, your business income will be any in-person sales and any online sales. This will be the starting point of your cash flow. It all starts with sales. Now let's do the quick and dirty version of this and then I'll dive in a little bit deeper. For the quick and dirty version, you will use your profit and loss statement. Here is an example of one. And as you can see, the top is where you're going to see all the money flowing into the business. Once again, the income section. Then your next bucket is your cost of goods, money spent to produce or provide the product. This is usually where folks are losing money. It is normally why they have no business profit, as they typically do not account for their cost of goods correctly, but more on this shortly. Then the next bucket of money flowing out of your business is your operational expenses. This is all the other money that you spend in your business, which then leads us to the bottom part, which is your net income. And this is where you find out if you had a profit or a loss. Did the business make money or not? Now keep in mind, you do not get to pocket this money. Not yet anyways. In a bit, we'll discuss where the profit is going because this money has more to pay for. So that's the quick and dirty version of the flow of money through your business. But let's take a closer look at each and where the money might be disappearing on you. We already discussed sales, so I'm sure you understand that money flows into the business. However, if you aren't priced correctly, then you don't have enough sales coming in. If you don't collect the money you are owed, then you will not have all the sales that you should either. Believe it or not, many small business owners do a job yet fail to get paid. Yep, they don't invoice on a timely manner and then they wonder why there's less money than they should have by the end of the month. That's correct. They did 5,000 in sales, but only collected 4,500 of it. Sometimes your loss of money happens before you pay anything. And as for pricing, it is critical that you are priced correctly. And your cost of goods and expenses are key components to you pricing the right way. So let's take a closer look at them. Let's take a look at the first big bucket of money going out of your business. This is your cost of goods, sometimes referred to as COGS. Cost of goods is an area that I see a lot of mistakes being made, usually due to folks not understanding what goes in this bucket in the first place. Way too often, everything is dumped into expenses, including items that really should be part of your COGS, and this ends up creating a false illusion that they are making more money than they actually are. Keep in mind, your cost of goods are going to be any products, materials, or ingredients that you use to perform the service or provide the product to your customer. Basically, if the customer gets to keep it, then it's a cost of goods the majority of the time. For example, if you install water heaters, it's going to be the water heater as well as the parts that are needed to install it. If you make soap, it's going to be all the ingredients you use to make your soap as well as the packaging it might come in. If you are a dog groomer, while it was their dog to begin with, you still used shampoo, maybe a bow or a handkerchief to put on little Fido. So don't assume that you don't have any costs if most of what you do is provide a service. But here's where the biggest mistake in cost of goods is made. There's one more cost that is oftentimes not captured, and that is your labor costs, especially if you're a solopreneur. For some reason, you are the worst offenders of this. There are two types of labor, operational labor, like office personnel, sales associates, estimators, people like that. Then there are the regular laborers. These are the folks doing the actual work to provide the service or create the product. This is typically where you wanna capture your employee pay as a business owner, but more on that shortly. Your cost of goods must include these labor hours to give you a true cost of goods. That water heater isn't going to get installed without the labor, and they're paying for you to install it. The soap doesn't get made without a person mixing it all together and creating it, and that dog doesn't groom itself. They all take labor to create the product or provide the service. If it takes two hours to install the water heater, then there will be two labor hours that are associated with it. If I can groom a dog in an hour, then I have one 
hour of labor to capture. If I groom five dogs a day, then that will have five labor hours in my cost of goods. If it takes me two hours to do a batch of soap, then I also have two hours of labor that I need to be putting into my cost of goods. Keep in mind, if I just buy the soap and put it on the shelf, then there is no labor cost. Therefore, my cost of goods will have no labor. It's all about who creates the product and provides the service. Earlier, I mentioned that you are oftentimes a one-person band and you are doing the labor. It is critical that you are capturing the labor at that time. You are wearing your employee hat in that moment and it needs to be captured. How else will you know that you are priced correctly to cover the employee you? Your pricing needs to cover all of your costs of goods, including money you should be making doing the job. Keep in mind, you wear two hats in your business, the employee you and the business owner you. The employee you gets paid in your cost of goods the majority of the time. The business owner you gets paid from your business profits. When a business owner fails to account for their employee time, they tend to underprice and eventually when they hire help, it drops their profit dramatically and unexpectedly due to not accounting for it correctly the first time. We will touch on your business owner money here shortly. Now, if we go back to our flow of money through your business, we started with the sales that came in. And let's assume that we have a fictional business that does $5,000 in sales. The first thing we're going to take away from that $5,000 is going to be the cost of goods. So let's assume that their cost of goods were broken into materials, which ran $2,000, and their labor, which came up to $1,000. That means that their cost of goods total was $3,000. If we were to stop here, we would know that the business started with $5,000 in sales. And now after we take away the 3,000, it's down to $2,000. And this money has to pay the rest of the bills and hopefully still have a profit for the business owner. The next big bucket of money leaving your business is going to be your operational expenses. Your operational expenses are going to be all the other expenses that you spend money on in your business. This is going to be anything you spend on advertising, your vehicle, insurance, uniforms, payroll expenses, rentals, purchasing a small equipment, operational payroll, you name it. There are so many other things your business spends money on. If it isn't part of your cost of goods, more than likely it's going to go here. It is also the bucket that adds up and can eat away at the business's profits. Since some things only cost $20 a month, it can add up. But so can bad jobs where you have to go buy a $17 part to fix something or even the wasted gas from doing multiple trips or running all over town. Money lost in operational costs can be silent and deadly. This stuff adds up. Just like your expenses at home can sneak up on you, so can your business expenses. Some are small bills that you forget about and others are due to poor processes in the business. For example, if you have poor scheduling and routing, you might spend way more on gas, wear and tear on your vehicle and payroll due to bouncing all over town. You end up spending more money than expected, which leads to less money at the end of the month. So it is very important that you pay attention to every dime that's going out in your business. Please keep in mind, there are some expenses that stay the same month after month, and then there are other expenses that will go up and down based on how busy you are. For example, you might spend more on advertising during certain months than other months. Your insurance might be paid quarterly. You use more gas and wear and tear on the trucks in your business. So it's important to know that sometimes your expenses might run $1,000 or they might run $2,000. You just need to make sure that you always plan for them. The best personal example you might be familiar with is when your car taxes are due. You always know it's coming, but most people are never prepared to pay it when it hits. We're going to pretend that our small business spends about $1,000 a month in expenses on average. So we go back to the calculation. This business took in $5,000. We know they spent $3,000 on their cost of goods. And now we're going to deduct $1,000 more for the expenses, which leaves them $1,000 for potential profit. Now, before I move on to profit, I want to take a moment to discuss pricing again. I've been talking about how poor pricing is probably hurting your profits. Keep in mind, your pricing must include the fact that you have these expenses to pay. For example, when our plumber charges $2,000 for that water heater, they are covering their costs, their labor, and setting aside money to still pay the business expenses. Same with our soap maker and our groomer. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I do have a link in the show notes on how to price correctly and accounting for your expenses in your pricing. You might want to check it out. Now, our final category that we saw in the profit and loss statement was net income. And a lot of people assume that this money goes right into your pocket. And it is not true. Your net income still has three jobs it needs to do. The first one is to pay your taxes. Yes, the evil government is going to come take your money for the profits that you made in your business and any money that you have already paid yourself. 
The second thing that you need to set aside for out of those profits is any money that you need to reinvest back in the business to help the business grow. And we call this retained earnings. You might save money because you need to buy material for any upcoming jobs. You might need some money to buy some equipment that is falling apart or you need. It might also be for some advertising that you would like to do. But for whatever reason, this money that you are saving is called retained earnings in the business to allow the business to grow. Please keep in mind, this is also any money that you put into savings to help protect the business for when times are lean. You might retain money to get through the slower months of your business or in case something major happens. Finally, after all that is paid for, you hope to have some money that you can take out as a business owner. And we call this your owner's draw. This is the money that you earn as the actual business owner. Keep in mind, if you did this correctly, you paid yourself earlier as an employee in the business up in your cost of goods because you're typically the one providing the service or creating the product that you serve. Now, let's get back to that calculation, shall we? So we had $5,000 that came into the business. We spent $3,000 on our cost of goods and we spent $1,000 on expenses, which left us $1,000 in profits. But out of that $1,000 in profits, we know we need to set some aside for taxes and some of it we're gonna put back into the business. Some folks do a third, third, third method. So it looks something like this. 333 goes to taxes, 333 goes to retained earnings, and then the owner will take the remaining 334. Yep you get to keep the extra dollar. Now, please keep in mind that when it comes to taxes, every single one of you are different. You need to see your tax professional as to how much money you should be setting aside every month towards your taxes. Some of you might be as low as 10% and some of you might be even 25 up to 30%. I'm not a tax professional, so I can't tell you what the right number is for your business. Only a tax professional can do that. But I will tell you that most people set aside 20, 25% and you're gonna be okay. Worst case, you have saved up money towards next year's taxes and it's an extra savings account. But whatever you do, do not spend this money. Keep in mind, you still have to pay taxes on that money you took out as an employee because those were also considered profits of the business because of the type of business that you have. So if you took out $1,000 as an employee and you have $1,000 in profits, the odds are going to be that it's a percentage of both those numbers and you need to be prepared for that. We do talk about this in other videos. This is the main reason that I tend to err on the higher side. So this way I can make sure that you get covered. So do that 15, 20%, maybe 25, depending upon how much you have in sales. So as you can see, your money comes into your business through income, goes out through your cost of goods, then continues to leave through your expenses, which ultimately gives you some profits, but you're not done there. Some of those profits flow out to your taxes, to your retained earnings to put back into the business, and then finally for the owner's draw. Reminder, you want to be paid as both the employee doing the business and then also as the owner. And down the road, when you start hiring people to replace you in the business, keep in mind, all of your money is going to come out of the profits of the business. So it's critical that you account for the employee hours up front so that you already have them baked in. It is one of the biggest reasons people don't make money. We started this entire video with the profit and loss for a reason. It is the number one tool that you have to follow the flow of money through your business. However, so many small business owners never look at this report, but you can get it monthly from your QuickBooks or any bookkeeping system that you use or get it from your bookkeeper if you're using somebody please know that by you knowing your business numbers, it's going to make you a more profitable business. I have other videos here on the channel that will teach you how to read your profit and loss statement. And don't forget that there is an affordable course in the show notes to help you learn your business numbers. You also can continue to check out the YouTube channel for all types of videos. If you want to learn more about your business numbers, then start here with the profit and loss video to help get you going. And I'll see you on a future video. Bye for now.